Hello friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. This is episode number 8 in our performance testing must have skill series. In this video, we will start discussing the performance testing core concepts. The concepts covered in this module are very important for individuals looking to start their careers in performance testing. If you are watching this series for the first time, please watch previous episodes of this series and continue these concepts. You can find the link to this playlist series in the description. We will begin by discussing the topics covered in this video. First, let's try to understand the definition of performance testing. Then, we will discuss the purpose of performance testing and the questions that it addresses. Next, we will explore the timing for conducting the performance testing. And then we will discuss different benefits that companies will gain by conducting the performance testing. Finally, we will discuss the reasons why it is advisable to conduct the testing using performance testing tools. So without wasting any time, let's dive into it. So let's start with our first topic. What is performance testing? You may be seeing different definitions of performance testing on the internet. I have tried to simplify the definition for better understanding. So please don't confuse yourself with different definitions. Instead to try to understand the concept. Basically, it is a type of non-functional testing that focuses on evaluating the speed, stability and scalability of a software application or system under various conditions in a production-like environment. Now let's break this definition to understand the details. So it is a type of non-functional testing. As I explained in the software testing module, which is module 1, testing can be broadly classified into two categories, functional and non-functional testing. So performance testing is one of the non-functional testing types. Subsequently, this testing focuses on assessing factors such as speed, stability and scalability of the software or application. So here speed means how quickly a software application or system responds to user actions or requests. Speed is often quantified as a response time or latency. For example, after you enter the username and password and hit the login button of the Facebook application, how long does it take to load the feed page or home page? Is it taking 2 seconds or 5 seconds? So here 2 seconds or 5 seconds is the response time of time the login request or action. Next, scalability means the ability to handle increased workloads, additional users are growing data volumes while maintaining or even improving its performance characteristics. Let's say our application is capable of handling 1000 users and as our business grows, we are expecting a 20% user base increase every year. That means we are expecting 200 additional users every year. In such scenario, does our system handle the additional load without compromising the performance aspects of the application? So all these scalability factors will be evaluated. Next, stability. Stability means how stable or reliable a system or application is under varying workloads. Imagine you are testing a popular e-commerce website in a preparation for a major holiday sale event. During this event, you expect a significant increase in user traffic compared to regular days. So is the system or application going to work similarly to regular days? So that's the question we should answer by conducting the stability test. Another example, let's say the customers are using the application 8 hours per day. In general, in morning period, the user load is more and as the day progresses, the load will decrease. So is our application behaving the same across different load conditions? All these stability factors will be evaluated during the performance testing. Finally, the definition says that the testing will be conducted in a production-like environment. To conduct performance testing, you should ensure that the testing environment is a production-like environment that closely mirrors the production system's hardware, software, and network configuration. Then only we can ensure that the application's performance characteristics such as speed, stability, and scalability closely match those of the actual production environment. This will also help us reduce the chances of performance problem after the application goes live to the end user. In real time, we may be seeing a lot of challenges to have a production-like environment due to various reasons. In such scenario, we need to understand the differences and scale down the workload accordingly. For example, let's assume in a production environment, we have two web servers, four application servers, and two database servers. And then in the testing environment, we have only one web server, two application servers, and one database server. That means the testing environment is 50% of the production environment, isn't it? So we need to scale down the workload to 50% and conduct the performance testing in the testing environment. If it has a system with 100% production volume, volume in the testing environment, then it can overload the system leading to potentially unrealistic test results. I hope you understand the performance testing definition and please feel free to mention if anything is not clear. Now let's discuss why we actually need to do performance testing. So why do we need to do performance testing? What will happen if we are not doing the performance testing? And what type of questions that performance testing will answer? More than 10 years ago, Amazon observed that they were experiencing a 1% of loss in sales due to every 100 millisecond delay. Although 100 millisecond may seem insignificant, it represented a significant cost for them. This occurred 10 years ago, highlighting just how crucial performance was even back then. In 2006, for Google, an additional 0.5 seconds of search page generation delay caused a 20% traffic drop. That means if the users are experiencing 0.5 second delay, they are switching to the other browsers for their search operations. For a big company like Google, this is a very important factor. They cannot afford to lose customers due to poor performance. This again explains how crucial the performance aspect 
for such companies. 70% mobile application users will close their app if it is taking too long to load. These days, we are doing most of our day-to-day -day operations using mobile apps, right? Companies need to ensure that these applications are working as per the customer expectations. Otherwise, they may lose customers and that can lead to a loss of revenue. Similarly, 53% of users will leave the site if it takes more than 3 seconds. That means these customers are expecting the response time to their request within 3 seconds. Any deviation may lead them to look for different options. These days, we have multiple options available for the same type of service. If the application is less interactive, in other words, poor performance, they will look for alternative options to fulfill their need. For example, if we take e-commerce applications, we have so many options available like Amazon, Flipkart, Snapdeal and many more. If one application service is not up to the mark, then they leverage the other service. So COVID-19 changed the way we do business. Enterprises that did not have an online presence are offered poor online experience for to survive, right? So enterprises need to understand how they can support current and future applications to remain competitive in all performance aspects. In the era of high-speed internet, user experience is even more critical. For these reasons, the importance of performance testing has been dramatically increased. Without proper performance testing, the companies will not understand their application performance. I hope you got an idea of why companies are showing more interest in performance testing these days. Let's look some of the different questions that the performance testing can answer. In performance testing, we can determine whether the clients are end users will get the response to their requests within the expected time, for example, in two seconds. It will also help us to understand the maximum user load that the application or system can handle. To understand this information, we may be running different performance tests. We can talk more about the different performance testing types in the upcoming videos. It will also help us to understand the application behavior if the load increases by X percent suddenly, for instance, 30 percent increase. With this information, the team can plan the necessary changes in the system or application to meet the user expectations. Every application or system will have some future projections. For instance, they may be expecting 20% additional growth in their business every year. With the help of performance testing, we can validate the performance of their future projections. These are just few questions and it can certainly answer many more. So far, we have discussed what is performance testing and why we need it. Now let's look at when exactly we need to conduct the performance testing. In the past, it was always conducted a few days or weeks before production deployment. Even in some organizations, they are still following the same approach. With this approach, if we find any performance bottleneck or issues, there is a little time or no time for the development teams to fix them and testing teams to do all the testing activities. This is a risk to the project team and in some situations, they will agree with the risk and schedule the deployment. In some organizations, they will have a process of doing performance testing after functional testing 100% is done. But we actually don't need to wait for the entire application and we can schedule the performance testing as early as possible with the available modules. If we identify any issues on those modules, team will have sufficient time to fix and test. That's why these days, teams are planning early performance testing for their projects. A single user test can also schedule if the environment for multi-user load is not ready. This way, we can assess the single user experience with the application. For instance, if the application does not meet the single user expectation, then there is no point in carrying out a multi-user load. In some scenarios, we may need to schedule the test the individual APIs or microservices to understand the behavior. This will definitely help the team to fix the individual service before it integrates with the entire application. It is always recommended to take a proactive approach to identify or eliminate any performance issues in the application. Here proactive approach means understanding the requirements and scheduling the test as early as possible. We don't want our end users to identify the issues in the production environment, right? So our next topic in this video is performance testing benefits. Let's look at some of the benefits that team can gain by conducting the proper performance testing. If we conduct thorough performance testing, we can understand the application behavior. If there are any issues, the team can fix them before production deployment. This will ensure that the application has an expected responsive behavior and also seamless user experience. If the testing is scheduled early, the teams will have enough time to fix them before production deployment. This will definitely reduce the cost and effort of fixing them after the production deployment. If the users are identifying the performance issue in the production environment, then that may impact our business. Proper performance testing will help us to identify the issues before our clients or users do. Since we are going to deliver a responsive and seamless user experience, it will help us the user retention and potential revenue growth. So the performance testing will give peace of mind as all the expectations will be validated before the deployment and necessary issues will be fixed. This way, the teams can deploy the application in the production environment with confidence. Again, these are just a few and performance testing provides many more benefits. Let's discuss our final topic for this video. Can we do the performance testing manually? After hearing all the discussions, you must be wondering whether we can do performance testing manually without any tools. Well, performance testing will be carried out by generating a multi-user load which creates some concurrency on the system to identify the performance bottlenecks. Let's look at a real-time example.
example to understand the reasons for conducting the performance testing using performance testing tools. Let's say there is a team lead who provides instructions to a group of users to perform a transaction at the same point in time. For example, if the user needs to do money transfer transaction, then the team lead will instruct all the members of the group to click on the transfer button at the same time. Even if we assume there would be some amount of concurrent load generated by doing this manually. However, how do we reproduce the exact same situation again in the case of any performance issues? The load created on the system might have differences every time we attempt to do it manually. More than that, how do we gather the performance metrics like each user response time and server throughput etc. In addition to that, we cannot use any functional automation tools as they are not suitable for generating multi-user load onto the systems. Therefore, we need sophisticated performance testing tools like MicroFocus, LoadRunner and Apache JMeter etc. These tools play a crucial role in effectively evaluating and optimizing the performance of applications. While discussing the performance testing concepts, I have mentioned functional testing, environments etc. Right? We should be aware of these concepts before we start learning performance testing. That is why I discussed these modules earlier and I hope you now understand the importance of organizing them before this module. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you understood all the concepts in this video. In case any specific concept is not clear or requests more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next video in module number 4. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.